Hey guys, Vizera Productions here, and this is a honest question for you. What would you rather have? A Nintendo Switch? Well, let, hold on. Let, let's just say that you don't own any of these consoles. You don't own a PlayStation 4 Pro, you don't own a Nintendo Switch, and you do not own a Xbox Scorpio. Nobody owns an Xbox Scorpio yet. But let's say you own none of these consoles. Which one would you rather have? Would you rather have a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 4 Pro, or Microsoft's upcoming Project Scorpio? Some people will say the PlayStation 4 Pro and the, and the, and the Scorpio because it's got those power. It's got the power and everything. Well, apparently, according to Nielsen Games 360, 16% of gamers above age 13 and above said that they would buy a Nintendo Switch. 15% say they would buy a PlayStation 4 Pro, while 13% said they wanted a Scorpio. And it gets, it continues. Things are a bit, things are a bit different with participants who asked about the interests of the standard PS4 and Xbox One. 21% of gamers and 15% of general audiences want to buy a standard PS4. 17% of gamers and 12% of non-gamers desired an Xbox One. General, audi uh, general audiences seem to have the same level of interest, interest for the Xbox One and Switch. So basically, uh, you can check out more uh, information they go on in the article in the description below. You can see they did more tests. But basically, most young gamers want a switch more so and i agree with them because think about that think about that you can take your games with you anywhere you want now of course microsoft is also trying to do the same thing with xbox play anywhere and it kind of works but it pretty much it's not a whole console as the nintendo switch is but still i do agree that portability where you can play a game anywhere is a huge factor and it's a huge selling point for consoles. That is exactly why the Nintendo Switch is selling because everyone's realizing, hey, look, I can play Destiny, even though Destiny hasn't been announced to come out for the Switch. It might, Destiny 2, it probably won't. Um, I can play Call of Duty if it comes out on the Switch and take it anywhere. And companies probably are like, oh, after the Wii U, we're not gonna go to Nintendo. But then I'm telling you, once the, once like people, more people start buying the Switch and it gets like, and it like stays the top to the top of the uh, of the best-selling consoles and like E3 goes by, and all the hype comes for, to Nintendo, that's gonna change in a heartbeat, like that fast. It's going to be a huge, huge step for third-party developers after the Switch. Or not after the Wii U, but still, the Switch is practically Nintendo's Nintendo's foot back into the into the gaming market because they dominate the they have a mon monopoly over the handheld market. So and and their consoles aren't doing so well. So why not take the success of the handheld market and bring it to the console market? And that's what they're doing. And I'm guaranteeing. Okay, if the Switch sells. If the Switch is the most popular system at the end of this quote-unquote generation, because this is technically the ninth generation, but it's not really because generations are getting all mixed up with, like, uh, midlife refreshes and all that. I'm telling you, Nintendo's gonna make a classic console. They're gonna make a traditional console where you just play games. Why? Because I think what happened was with um was after all the fails with the gamecube and the n64 yes it was because of their choices of uh, media but still like once nintendo finally gets a foothold in the um like home console game market they're gonna go back to the traditional thing because then they'll be back on they'll be back on top everyone will remember the nintendo brand because Nintendo's been sloping and sloping, and with Sotoro Iwata, he's just like, okay, we're, we're, uh, we understand that we can
could fix this by making a powerful console. But you know what? I think we should try something new, and he tried something new with the Wii. The Wii sold, but of course because of the gimmick. And the Wii U didn't sell, but it had huge potential to like sell like... I would have expected the, the Wii U to sell just like as much as the 3DS did, because technically if you think about it, a Wii U is a DS, because it's got the touch screen and the top screen, it's just like a wireless DS. It's interesting. It's like the um, the one DS that people were talking about, but still, yeah, that's like that's why Nintendo is doing all of this stuff with the Switch because they know that if the handheld market, if they have practically an entire control over the gaming handheld market, yes, smartphones are taken over, but they're also entering that uh, that domain. They would be able to. And com if combine that with the consoles, which is what they're doing, the Switch will easily wipe the floor with, let's say, a PS5 that comes out. Easily. And I do think that if done right, the Scorpio might even be, um, may even just be like, um, just like a little crumb compared to Nintendo. If done right, because I think right now, Nintendo, um, the only console that uh, Nintendo is dealing with right now in terms of competition is the PS4. But I'm but when it comes to Christmas, they, they're probably going to be battling the Scorpio unless at E3 they unveil like maybe Sony unveils a like I said my E3 prediction video um, or E3 ramble like a handheld console to compete with the Switch. If they release that, then of course they'll keep fighting Sony. But if Sony does absolutely nothing for like hardware wise in E3 or doesn't announce anything at all, all the way up to Christmas, then on then Christmas of 2017 is going to be when um, Sony is going to almost be out of the picture if the Nintendo Switch A sells really well and B, Sony doesn't announce any hardware. Because then, the Scorpio would be the only, the only real new thing that's actually pushing. Because right now, like, if the Scorpio is as, like, extremely powerful, which it, it is, it sounds extre- it sounds really powerful. Like, think about it, Fallout 4 running in VR. That's, that, wow. Like, if, that, that would be, like if like if Microsoft gets um gets like their foot firmly planted in the gaming market with the Scorpio Sony will have to will probably lose a bit of their foothold and they'll have to probably come out with the PS5 earlier and if the pattern continues like that they may even like see a slump in sales because of that because think about it the Scorpio is just an Xbox One S on super steroids. Yeah, I just compared it to super steroids. Super steroids. Super steroids. That would be like that. That's not their ninth gen console. It technically is capable of being a ninth gen console, but I'm just gonna call it the Xbox One X. I'm just gonna call it the Scorpio the Xbox One X just for the rest of the video because that's what people are dubbing it. Um, let's say the Xbox One X is extremely, like, um, powerful, which it is already being announced to be, then Microsoft will be able to get a clean entry with their 9th gen console, and then, and then, like, there won't be much room, uh, left for Sony, so they'll have to, like, try and make room, and the thing is, if the Switch, like, let's just say, for example, this um, Nintendo keeps the um, their sales records of the Switch, and like it's selling off the shelves for like another five generations of console, if consoles even survive that long. Then other uh, other competi uh, other competitions don't stand a chance because it's obvious that um, nobody can really compete out of Sony and Microsoft with Nintendo in the handheld market. So if they bring that success to the console market, the home market, then the home console market, then there is absolutely nothing left for Microsoft and Sony to do but make games for them. And while some people would probably be saying that's good, 
I would actually say that's bad because of course um, the more competition there is the lower the prices would be like competitive prices better hardware but of course the only advantage for other com um, uh, like uh, companies to jump ship and start developing would be that fanboys would probably die out which would be better I guess for some pe for some fanboys would die out but I really think that it just comes down to how successful the switch is all right guys hope you enjoyed this video please leave your thoughts in this in the comment section below and see you.